Vicki from Vicki's Vintage and I'm coming to you from my kitchen here in Marinette, Wisconsin. And the reason why I'm coming to you from my kitchen is because I don't have a brick and mortar store uh, nor a studio, but what I do have is a booth at the Main Street Antique Mall here in Marinette. And that's where I sell my furniture and my Miss Lillian's products. And um, I'd like to welcome you to this Facebook Live. Thank you for joining us. And um, tonight we're going to be painting what I introduced to you last week as these decoupage um, license plates. First of all, I'd like to tell you that you have a chance to win an 8 ounce jar of Miss Lillian, and I have that right here. Not this color in particular. Uh, you can choose a color, and we have now, as of this week, 167 colors to choose from. They just added 14 new colors to the color line, and so you'll be able to um, follow the instructions that they write for you in the comment section uh, once they select a name randomly. So just be watching for that. And what you have to do, excuse me, what you have to do to win that is like, comment, and share this video, and then you'll be entered to win. Okay, so uh, let's see. If you'd like to purchase any of Miss Lillian's products, uh, my affiliate link is posted in the description or you can go to their website at misslillianspaint.net and you can look for a local retailer. Uh, they are having a 20% off birthday celebration sale this month through August 31st and you would have to use the promo code birthday20 and I'm um, thinking that that will be in the comments as well. So um, I also have a Facebook page called Vicky's Vintage if you'd like to go and check it out and maybe give me a like, I'd appreciate that. Okay, so, um, as I showed you, we're gonna be um, doing these license plates with decoupage, and these are just napkins that I decoupaged with, and a lot of times I, well, I put these in my booth, and a lot of times if I'm in there restocking, people will think that I painted these, and I'm not that talented. So <laughs> anyway, you can get any look you want with napkins, and I wanted to say before I forget that I find a lot of my napkins at um, Tuesday morning store in, um, well, our, our local store is in Green Bay, Wisconsin, but um, they have a wide selection of napkins and you pay maybe three to five dollars for a package of napkins where online you might pay um, eight dollars. So you can really save some money and they have a lot of choices that Tuesday morning. So um, what I did this week, I put some napkins um, on a license plate and just wanted to show you. You can get all different color variations. Okay, and your supplies are going to be Miss Lillian's paint, sandpaper, I just grabbed 120 and 220, um, layering wax bar, it gives you resistance, swamp mud, which helps you to paint onto a shiny, slick surface and then that helps your paint to adhere to that slickness. Okay, and then lackluster and crackle medium, and um, I think we can get going. Paint brushes, scissors, things like that. Okay, so first of all, well actually, before I start swamp mudding that, um, what I do on evenings, maybe my husband is watching a football game, I do this in advance. You wanna take apart your napkins, and usually they're three-ply, so you just kind of um, work at a corner until you can get it to separate. And you wanna make sure that you have the two just plain tissue paper coming apart. And you want to separate that carefully, try not to tear it. And you just pull and separate. You just want that one individual top layer. So that's really important. And then just pull it apart. Okay, and then what I do is I will, I used to cut these out, and I guess I still could just to show you. Um, this, okay, so what I recently figured out is that if you want a more natural looking edge, I just take a um, eyedropper and put water in it and just go around the edges and then 
I tear that away and it gives that natural jagged edging. I would probably would have brought that water in here, but for sake of time, like that. And you can just gently tear away the excess and then you just have that natural edging like that. Okay, and then if I have an edge like this, sometimes I will use that in a corner and you know, I won't have that gold showing. You can, once that's down, you can sand that off. Okay, you don't want any of that showing. So a lot of times if I have straight edges like that, I'll use them for the lower or the upper corner pieces. So I just wanted to show you how to get your pieces um, torn apart and looking natural. Okay, so then what I do is I will put all the pieces that I've cut out or torn out in baggies to get just with their individual napkin pieces so that I don't get them mixed up because then your colors aren't going to match if you get mixed up. So I just keep them in baggies separated like that. Okay, so your first step is to swamp mud it. So always pour it in a separate cup. Don't dip directly from the jar. As I talked about last week, you will um, be introducing bacteria into your, your paints. So I just wanted to show you, boy, I didn't pour very much swamp mud in there. Hold on. Okay. Okay. And I don't, like to go in a straight line with these. I want this to just kind of crisscross everywhere. I want there to be um, lines everywhere and not the smooth brush strokes Pixie. because I want this to to um, look old and and uh, not be perfect. Okay, so that's how you apply swamp mud and I'm going to get rid of this and let that dry. Okay, get rid of a few things here and make more room. Alright, so I have a license plate all done and the swamp mud is dry and um, um, not smooth anymore. I have a good surface to paint on. So um, I'm going to pull some of these over here because what I've done is I've already gone ahead because of the time it takes and I'm going to lay some of these down to show you. Now you can't have a ceiling fan on or anything because these will go flying everywhere with just the slightest uh, motion of air and then you want to make sure that if you have words of course that it's upright. And you kind of want to pick a paint that matches the background of your napkin. So I painted these in antique white. I just thought it was a good match for this background. And then I typically, I personally, uh, don't like to do color, but I did one just to show you. Let me see where these numbers go. Okay, this way. Um, they, they do sell in my booth, but um, I'm a fan of the white. And then this one, see how this one isn't a, a cleaner white, it's more of a beigey white, so I picked cobblestone. And then what you do is you take all your pieces from your napkin and you just play with them and put them in places. Um, where you would like, balance them how you would like. If you're a symmetrical person, um, you know, you just want to kind of balance it. This I pieced. These two didn't even go together here. I just pieced this. So I think we'll be working with this one. So it's swamp mudded. And then what I do is, I have to turn this toward me. Okay, so I look at the letters that are going to be exposed. Um, and I'm going to use our layering wax. So this is what it looks like. Okay, and what it does is it gives a resist to the paint. And so when you go to sand these parts off later, it's going to be easy to 
to sand in those places where you applied the layering uh, bar. Okay, so if I have my pieces here, I don't want to wax underneath them. What, you know, why use the bar in places that you're not going to need it? So I just kind of put my pieces like a puzzle in place. And then where I want this chippy look here, um, that's what I'm doing now is just going along the numbers. I like to outline the numbers somewhat. Okay, and then I'll just have, that's where I'll get the chippiness. Okay, and then Oh, there's one right there. And then I also like the edges. Like, um, I don't know, I just think that everything pops more when, when you outline it. Okay. Then the other product I'm going to use today is our Crackle Medium. And... Again, you don't want to dip into this. Um, instead of using a brush though, I like to use my finger. And so I pour it onto my finger and I like to use a, a thinner layer rather than a thicker layer. And I'm just gonna look in bare spots and just apply it to the license plate. Just, um, not randomly, but um, just in places where I want a little bit of a crackle happening, a little aging. Okay, so you can just put it wherever. And then um, I'm gonna pull these away or my blow dryer is gonna blow them away. I'm gonna to have to use a blow dryer, and what's recommended is a low cool setting. I unfortunately do not have a low cool. I have low, but not cool. So just tack this up a little bit. So we're gonna be turning on the blow dryer just to get this, just for a minute, just to tack this up. No. <laughs> I'm gonna <to> stop. <laughs> I just told you not to blow your stuff all over, but there I went ahead and did that, okay. but I'm just going to go ahead for sake of time and I'm using cobblestone on this one because remember my background was a little bit darker than white and I've already pre uh, shaken this this jar of paint but there's a marble inside you're going to need to shake it to get it mixed up well okay I think that's probably more than what I need Okay, I like to go in the areas where I don't have my crackle applied and get that done first. And like I said, I'm kind of doing that cross hatch. Not everything's straight and perfect. Okay, so when I go over this, I do not drag my brush through that crackle medium. I lightly go over that. Maybe I didn't have enough paint. Let me see. A little bit more. Okay, that should be enough. Okay. And here I got a brush hair in there. I'm going to try and get that out with a brush. Oh, there. Okay, 
so many people don't like, comment, and share. Remember to like, comment, and share uh, to be in the running for a free eight ounce jar of Miss Lillian's. And that will be announced at the end. Okay, so oops, I went a little heavy on that, but we'll see how it turns out in that spot. Okay. Wash my hands. Okay, so now we're going to be using the blow dryer again. And the, if I did it well, you'll see the crack will start showing quickly. I'm going to turn it up a little higher for time's sake. the crackling coming in and that's how um, I should have it ever I got another little hair right there Get that out of there okay and this is where I would um, normally go in and actually I want to lay these back on to try and see where what numbers were sticking out so that I know where to sand okay I, I didn't blow dry long enough because I don't want to keep you on here forever. Um, so it's going to be a little wet. Okay. And if it's wet, I mean, I recommend wait, you know, blow drying a little longer, waiting till it's completely dry. Because you, I may end up taking off bigger patches than what I want to just because it's not completely dry. But for time's sake, I want to... I want to just show you the idea and I I don't mind when when there are some big patches I think it unevenly you know looks better okay so I think I put a little of that on the seven yes I did now see how easily that's coming off I'm hardly pushing if I would have not used the layering bar I would be uh, rubbing and rubbing to get that paint off because the paint adheres so well. I don't know if I put it there, but... Okay. It just comes off so easily, I'm barely touching it. Okay, this is not dry yet. This I did not blow dry long enough, but I just don't want to keep you on here forever. Okay, so you can see how quickly that comes off wherever I've applied the layering wax bar. And then just show you along the edges too. See, I'm barely putting any pressure. Move this. Okay, and I'll go back in and finish that later. I just wanted to show you that. Okay. So, get that out of the way, and get my hands 
So now, my blow dryer blew everything everywhere. I didn't follow my own advice. So I'm going to try and reposition these. Do you see any more? Oh, I see this one right here. Okay, so this was here and this was here. And that one with that one. Okay, so now we're going to use the lackluster. And I'm going to see if I have a smaller brush. Yeah, I do. Right here. Okay, and I'm going to use the lackluster to decoupage. Just double check, make sure your numbers are the right way. Position these where you think you want them. And then, pour some lackluster. So, this one I already went ahead and did yesterday where I swamp mudded, let it dry, painted it, or used the layering wax bar, painted it, sanded it. And now that it's thoroughly dry, we're going to use this lackluster as our decoupaging medium. Okay, so just paint it on. Make sure you have it adequately painted on and everywhere where it's going to be, otherwise it won't, it'll peel up. Okay, so position it. Press it down and then I like to just go over the top just by dabbing, getting out any air bubbles. And do you see how that color just starts popping through? Here's where I cut it. So this one must have been one that I cut and it's more perfect lines and now I'm going for um, the ones where I tore. and. I think I tore on a few of these, it looks like. Okay, so now I need to look at my words. They're upright. And just kind of eyeball where you have that. And get this generously applied. Okay. Tap that down. And I like to start from one end and then work to the other end, just because of, um, it, you know, preventing air bubbles. Okay, looks like I need a little bit more. Okay, don't forget to like, comment, and share for your chance to win an 8-ounce jar of Miss Lillian's paint. Color of your choice. And there's a sale through August 31st. You can use my affiliate link or go to the website and try and find a retailer that's uh, located near you. Okay. So, just to have a uniform look, um, use that lackluster and that'll be a protectant, a sealant for your paint over the rest of the license plate. Okay, and then you just have to let that dry and use binder twine to um, run through the license plate holes. And there you have it. If we need to see that again, I do have, oh, I, maybe I should show you the colored one. If I can find the pieces, here they are. Um, make sure I have it, I don't, okay. Upright, and I chose that color because there was purple lavender in the background of the napkin, but like I said, typically I like to stick with a white background. It's just my preference. Okay, so we'll just do one more just to show you a color one. And then we'll be getting close to tying this up. This one was a quick one, but really, you know, it takes longer because it takes time to cut out all those napkins and um, and then line them up. I just did that in advance because um, we'd be here for hours otherwise. 
Okay, so see how I know I use the edges of the napkin to go along the edges of the um, license plate and then I didn't have to rip all that. This can either be torn off, sanded off later. Um, tucked under. Okay, and I'm gonna go to this edge. Kind of check out where I need to paint this on. Doesn't matter if you go over because you're gonna be painting it anyway. Okay. So Keely, if you're, I'm getting close to tying this up here. This one's not lasting very long, so maybe you wanna um, see if anybody has liked, comment, and shared, and maybe um, pick a name. So the folks at Miss Lillian's representative is on the other end, so if you have questions, she can um, answer them for you. If you have something directed to me, I can go on later and and try and respond to you. Okay, so put this little middle one on. More of that under here. Not pooling, but but not so thin that that it's not going to hold. So yeah, I'm still a big fan of the of the solid white. Now colors I like on my furniture, but for some reason um, they're not as appealing to me on the license plate, although, like I said, they sell in my booth. So there are people who love this, it's just your own preference. Or they have a theme in their home, color theme, okay. So color one versus the white, Let's see that? Oh, I'm just really partial to these. Okay, so hopefully, Rihanna, have they have they selected? Have you seen? Not yet. Not yet. Selected a winner yet? So just remember, um, August is our birthday month for Miss Lillian's, and twenty percent off when you use um, the promo code Birthday Twenty. Um, and I have an affiliate link, it's posted in the description. You can go to Miss Lillian's website to find your local retailer if you have one in your area. Uh, and, and just waiting on a winner for the... For the uh, there is a question, do you seal with anything else? I seal with lackluster, they do have different sealants that you could find on Miss Lillian's paint.net. They have um, Duro Shield, they tend to have a higher sheen. I like the matte finish, so this is the one I use most often, even for my furniture. I have used the satin and I have used the Duro Shield for really high traffic traffic areas, but th this is going to be on a wall, you're not going to be touching it or grabbing it. I just use one coat on these. On my furniture, I use three to five coats of lackluster, but they do have other sealants. Brenda Wood. Brenda Wood. Wood. Brenda Wood, congratulations. You've won the 8-ounce jar. So um, you'll be able to go to the website or follow the directions that Keeley posts for you uh, to pick your color choice, and they will send that to you. So um, I hope you enjoyed this. I think I mentioned about the binder twine. I just want to mention it one more time. Uh, when you wrap that around, I just eyeball it. I don't have this measured. Um, I wrap it around twice, I tie, um, I can't remember, double or triple knots, but I hot glue in between each knot, otherwise this has a tendency to unravel really quickly, and you want that to, to stay intact. So these are popular in my, in my booth. So um, Brenda would enjoy your jar of 8-ounce paint, and um, I would love it if you post a project on my Vicky's Vintage page of what you did with it. Okay, thanks for joining me. Good night.